Welcome to Bits and Bites with Brittany, your monthly look at what's going on in dining services. On today's program, Bob Norris will tell us more about the household model in continuing care. And TJ Hartke will tell us more about the special events for the continuing care residents. everyone and welcome to the show. I am here in Garden Terrace with Assistant Director of Dining Services, Bob Norris. Bob is going to tell us all about the household model here in Garden Terrace and some other things that we probably don't know about this. So Bob, um, tell us more about the household model. Well the household model is really unique uh, in the sense that um, dining and nursing and the nursing staff are called household associates. They're like multi-caregivers. Uh, they provide uh, the clinical care for the residents. Uh, they help in the dining rooms, so they're the waiters, waitresses of the dining rooms. They also do light housekeeping in the dining rooms. And what makes it unique from a dining standpoint is we keep everything looking like it would be at your home. You know, mm -hmm. we have uh, nice uh, residential pots and pans. We don't have a steam table line. Um, you know, it just looks like it would be at home. And then, of course, out here we have our dining room, we have our living room. It's, it's again, just like it would be at home. And, uh, you know, dining and nursing uh, just do a great job of, of collaborating together and giving the residents that person-centered care. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of the residents in independent living are used to a five-week menu cycle. Do you offer that here as well? Uh, we do have a five-week menu cycle. Our five-week menu cycle is um, a little bit more extensive in the sense that we're offering five courses to our residents every day. So for example, we have an early riser meal um, that goes from you know 6.30 to 8.30. And basically that's like a fresh baked muffin, juice, coffee, hot cereals, cold cereals, um, yogurts, things like that. And then after that we go into our brunch meal, which is 10.45 to 12.30. And that basically is your breakfast. Um, your breakfast meal along with something, you know, we usually have about 10 items from lunch uh, that are on the menu as well, and um, dessert. And then at, in the afternoon we do a 2 p.m. Uh, social snack that typically would be like a strawberry shortcake, some puddings, yogurts, punch, milk, um, that type of thing. And that goes from like 2 to 3. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that we serve our dinner meal which goes from 4 o'clock until 5.30. And um, after that, we do a nightcap meal that goes from 8 o'clock at night till during the night. So mm -hmm. basically, the residents have the availability of food 24 hours a day. Um, we're also going to, you know, I did want to mention about our, our um, accessibility. The residents are able to go to a residential refrigerator mm -hmm. that's fully stocked, um, as well as a freezer that's fully stocked with a variety of ice creams. Um, the refrigerator is fully stocked with milks and yogurts and applesauce and puddings. And uh, the coffee machine is, is available 24-7. The juice machine is available. Right behind us we have uh, snack baskets. Mm -hmm. We have fresh fruit. Um, there's also a cookie jar in the kitchen that has wrapped up uh, chocolate chip, oatmeal cookies, uh, sugar cookies that's available 24-7. Mm -hmm. So it really is nice for the residents to be able to access these things throughout the whole entire day. Great. So how have you seen continuing care evolve since you started here at Oakcrest? Well, uh, we are much more focused on the residents' um, person-centered care, them as an individual. You know, In other words, for example, not just from a dietary standpoint, but just from the daily living activities, for example. If, if a resident, for example, likes to primarily take a bath Mm -hmm. in the morning or they primarily like to take a bath in the afternoon then that's when the household associates would give them their bath. It's when the, it's what and when the resident wants it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's again it's more of a person-centered care approach rather than what's convenient for air schedule. Um, so it's evolved a lot like that and the fact that we offer all these item, all these meal choices and variety, we've improved our variety mm -hmm. a lot and the quality of foods that we 
we serve, you know. In fact, my personal mission when I left uh, independent living where I was for almost 10 years mm -hmm. and came over to continuing care, my whole personal mission was for the residents to say, you know what, the food um, is just as good here, if not better, than when I was in independent living. So mm -hmm. that's, that's been my whole person, personal mission, was to give them the ample uh, choices and the high quality of food and service you know, mm -hmm. for them. So what are some other misconceptions that people might think about continuing care that aren't true? Well, sometimes you hear the saying of, oh, it's hospital food, mm -hmm. you know? Now, th the funny thing is sometimes we have residents who might be, for example, at one of the hospitals getting some, you know, initial rehab. Uh, when they come to here, you know, which is down the hallway when they're, when they're in a rehab floor, they'll come and say, I couldn't wait to get back here to Oakcrest. Oh. You know, the food's so much better here than mm -hmm. it was at a particular hospital they were at. Right. So our food is nowhere at all hospital food. Our food is just as good, if not better, than our, um, than, than the great food that's produced over in the independent living dining rooms. Okay. So would you compare this food to independent food? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, our, for example, we have an awesome shrimp salad sandwich oh. here. Um, you know, a great Maryland crab soup. In fact, coming up on Mother's Day, um, I put a, a Maryland all lump crab cake on the menu that, that will have a, a steak cut french fries and coleslaw. So I know that's their favorite. I know that probably 98% of the residents will want a crab cake that day for Mother's Day. Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, they, they always come and say how delicious our, our crab cakes are, or shrimp salad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they all love Eddie's, uh, Chef Eddie's oatmeal. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he makes the best oatmeal, for example. It's fortified with brown sugar and oh, wow. regular sugar. And uh, it's just, I don't even like oatmeal, but I love eating <laughs> Chef Eddie's oatmeal. Okay. Yeah. Bob, thank you so much for being here. In just a few moments, TJ will let us know about all the events going on in continuing care. But first, let's check out the calendar for independent living. On May 5th, the Independent Living Dining Rooms will host a Cinco de Mayo dinner at 4 p.m. On Sunday, May 11th, Fireside and Windows will host a Mother's Day brunch and the Oak Room will host a Mother's Day dinner from 3 to 6.30 p.m. On May 13th, guest chef Dana Eldridge will be in the Oak Room at 4 p.m. On May 21st, the Dining Administration will be our guest chef at the Fireside Dining Room at 4 p.m. On May 26, the Independent Living Dining Rooms will serve a Memorial Day picnic dinner at 4 p.m. On May 27, the Elegant Dinner will be held in the Garden Room at 5.30 p.m. On May 28, the Acorn will host their next dinner and movie featuring The Monuments Men. Let's take a look at the trailer. While we must and will win this war, we should also remember the high price that will be paid if the very foundation of modern society is destroyed. There's a Michelangelo joke to be made. You're just the man to make it. We have been tasked to find and protect art that the Nazis have stolen. Well, the chaps are all very anxious to get started. We have your architect from Chicago, a sculptor, a director of design at the School of Fine Arts, and a few other experts in various fields of art. How are the fellas making out? Like Olympians! You want to go into a war zone and tell our boys what they can and cannot blow up. That's the idea. If you would just read the orders. I'll tell you what these orders say. Don't knock out Colonel the building. Bear. Do not interrupt me, Lieutenant. I think that went well. We're going to start with a friend in Paris who's going to have some idea where the French art has been hidden. How can I help you steal our stolen art? The Nazis are taking everything with them, so we have to get as close to the front as we can. Look at this. It says if Hitler dies or if Germany falls, they're to destroy everything. Everything. We gotta move. They tell us who cares about art, but they're wrong. It is the exact reason that we're fighting for a culture, for a way of life. What is all this? People's lives. Hitler wants everything. It's your responsibility now. Of what we're 
we're doing here. You're gonna miss me so much when this is all over. All hell's breaking loose here. We have some unfinished business. We're now outside with TJ Hartka. TJ is going to tell us about the special events going on in continuing care. TJ, this is a beautiful outside setting. Do you ever use it here? Oh, absolutely. We love coming out here, and it's one of the great uh, things that we have available for our residents here in Garden Terrace Dining. Uh, we're sitting out in the garden area, which is right next to our building. Mm -hmm. And what we do is during the summer months when it's nice weather, we really love coming out here, utilizing the grill. We actually do a lot of different cookouts and events right out here on this patio. What are some of the past events you've done this year outside? Uh, this year, we're getting ready to gear up into our first event of the year, which is Cinco de Mayo. We're going to be celebrating with some traditional Mexican fare. Then, of course, we have all our favorite events that happen over the summer with Labor Day and Memorial Day, and then my personal favorite, Fourth of July. We always have great events with great food, anything from hot dogs and hamburgers, barbecued chicken, corn on the cob, anything that you could think of, we're going to set up out here throughout the year. Wow, that sounds delicious. So what makes it important to you all to have these events? When it comes to the residents over here in assisted living, it's really important that we make them feel at home. When they're over and independent, there's a lot more freedom and there's a lot more things going on. But just because you come over to assisted living doesn't mean you have to give that up. Mm -hmm. Just because you're coming over and you need a little bit more help doesn't mean you can't enjoy a wonderful picnic outside with your friends and your fellow residents. Doesn't mean that you cannot uh, enjoy all that life has to offer. So we try to be all inclusive when it comes to doing different events here in Garden Terrace Dining. I'm so glad we can take care of our residents no matter where they are. Absolutely. CJ, thank you for joining us. That's it for Bits and Bites with Brittany. I'm Brittany Woodard. Have a great day.